Okay, let's set the scene. Imagine having an image gallery without any folders to sort them. Well, you can have thousands and thousands of thousands of pictures, but obviously it won't be sorted out. It would just be some lots and lots of clumps of mess. But what if you decide to create a folder? And then you name it important pictures and now you put every single important picture into the folder named important pictures that is what we call sorting now that is what sets are and that that is what they aim to be now you can do this with any type of data or document or video or image or whatever information that you have on hand as long as they can be sorted out that is a part of, of what sets aim to be. So good day. Uh, I am Eugene Allen P. Matro from BSCS2C. And I will showcase now my t chosen topic for discrete structures 2, which are sets, as well as one of its branches. And that branch specifically is uh, set theories or simply set operations. Now I will also have uh, something to accompany me with. And that is my drawing pad right here. Alright, as I've already mentioned, sets group objects together, but this is through a layman's term. Uh, in all seriousness, the true definition of sets, as we can hear, is a collection of distinct objects. Now, uh, they can be defined by describing the contents or by listing the elements of the set. Now, this is done through a necessary use of enclosed of enclosing curly brackets which are these two and then you divide the information from one another with commas okay so going back to what i previously said and wrote about elements now elements are objects that belong to a set uh, each element or member of a set is uh, once again separated by a comma and then uh, enclosed with the curly brackets so what does this symbol mean well that literally means is an element of which signifies that an element is a member of a set but if you were to put a slash onto that such as this then it would denote that it is not a member of that set now let's check with set A. Now set A, if you haven't guessed already, are the colors of the rainbow. So we can say that red is an, uh, an element of set A. But if we were to say pink, well that won't be an element of set A. Like I said, that is, that is how you read it. Red is an element of A, this one. And then pink is not an element of A. In a set, there are also subsets, which can be defined as sets wherein every element can be found on the first set, uh, such as this, set A. Now we're going to create set B. So how do we write subsets? As mentioned, we take elements from the first set, but not all of them. If we were to write every single element, from set A into set B, then that would be an improper set. We don't want that. But if we were to write such as this, our set B, we only took red, orange, and yellow, not every single element of set A, that is a proper set. A proper set is denoted as something like this. Have that. Something like this that denotes an, a proper set but denoting an improper set would be something like this you would just put an underline into this weird c symbol now finally we can move on to the bread and butter of today's topic which are set operations now uh, there are four different operations that we use with the first one being union presented with you 
U symbol. Intersection presented with this upside down U symbol. Difference with A minus and then complement with an apostrophe. Alright, so let's start with union. Now union is defined as sets whose elements are found in the uh, available sets. In this example, we have the union of A and uh, set A and B. Now set A has A, B, C, and D, while set B has C, D, and E. So how do we write this? Well, we take all uh, uh, all of their elements, and then put it inside in between our curly brackets. Now the uh, union of set A and B would only be A, B, C, D, and E. We would not repeat elements. That's how you write union. Now what if you want to make a Venn diagram out of it, out of union? Well, you would do something like this. Now the insides are blacked out because you are making them join together. For example, let's do this. That's set A and then set B. And then now we enclose them here in a box. Yeah, we would put S. Uh, I will explain that later. But for now, that is how you put union into a Venn diagram. Moving on to the next operation, which is intersection. Now, intersections are sets whose elements are common to the available sets, uh, to all available sets, which means the answer of for our example here, set A intersects set B would be the elements that are present in both sets. So let's just write it. In this case, let's check. In set A, we have A, and we don't have A in set B. We have B in set A, but we don't have B in set D. Now we have C's in both sets, so we write C. We also have D in both sets, so we write D. But we don't have an E. So, now comes to the end of the intersection. That would mean the intersection of set A and B can only be C and then D. How do we write this as a Venn diagram? Now, well, let's do this. We make two circles like the uh, previous one, the union. But what we only care about here is the middle. Uh, hence, the intersection of set A and set B. And close once again with an S outside. Following that is the difference of sets. Now the operation of difference is a set, uh, are sets whose uh, elements are found in set A but not in set B. Hence our example right here, set A, A, B, C, and D, and then set B, uh, C, D, and E. Now we will subtract the elements of B into A. Or in other words, we will be canceling out some terms. So, we would look into this, the elements of set B because that is on the other side as presented here. It is set A minus set B. So, set B first, we, we have the letter C. We would cancel out the C in A. Now we look at D, we would cancel out the D. And then we have E. But we don't have an E in A, so we just cancel that out. So the difference of set A and set B are letters A and B, nothing more, nothing less. So how do we write the Venn diagram of a difference? Well, once again, two circles, A and then set B. But the only uh, set that we care about here is set A. And uh, we don't care about set B because set B just decreases the amount of elements that set A has. Once again, we enclose it and then put an S outside. Okay, now we have our last operation, which are the complement of sets. Now, the complement of sets is defined as set of elements found in the universal set, but not in set A. As per our example here, our universal set, which is S, uh, as previously mentioned with our Venn diagrams, the S outside, are or is the universal set. Now our universal set here holds elements A, B, C, D, and E. Our set A 
is uh, R, A, B, C, and D. Uh, as previously mentioned, with the definition of complement, we have to find the elements that are not present in set A. So the complement of set A, give, uh, given our elements here, would only be the letter E. How do we write the Venn diagram of a complement? Well, we simply do one circle. So that would be set A. We now create the box and close it and the universal set outside and then the one we obviously care about are the elements that are on the outside and not inside set A. So now we move on to more complex examples. We have some students. These students have played basketball, soccer, and some of them both. Now we have 200 students played basketball, 150 with soccer, and then 100 with both. We have to find out how many students played each sport. Well, basketball, which we will be uh, defining as B. Then, once again, union of soccer, which we, which we will put as S. To find the union of uh, basketball and soccer of those two sets, we have to add the elements, or in this case, the numbers of students of basketball and then soccer, and then uh, decrease them by the amount of the intersection of both of them. So in this case, we start first with the addition. We have 200 players of basketball and then 150 with soccer. We add them together, we get 350. Now we decrease them with the intersection of basketball and soccer. We already have that, it's 100. Those represent the players that play, uh, the students that played both uh, sports. So we decrease it by 100. Therefore, the amount of students that played is a total of 250. So with our final example, we have here a survey. Uh, in, a, in a survey, uh, 60 people liked tea, 45 people liked coffee, 30 people liked milk, 25 people liked coffee and tea, 20 people liked tea and milk, 15 people liked coffee and milk, and then finally, we have 10 people that liked all of them. And now the question is, how many people were surveyed? So to find this, we must first add all the individuals that liked one of the three things and then the uh, individuals that liked all of them. So in this case, P, 60, then we added with the coffee, 45, milk, 30, and then the people that liked all three, which is 10. With this, we get uh, we get 145, but that isn't the amount of people that were present. We still have these people that liked two things, two out of the three things in total. So we have to decrease them to the total number that we have already obtained. So 145 minus the people that liked coffee and tea, which is 25. The next is 20, and then the next is 50. So we have to decrease uh, a total of uh, a number of 60 people, or 60 digits in this case, into 145. So we get 85. Now that is the total of people that were surveyed. So to top things off, we will now create a Venn diagram for that previous example. Now, we now know that there are 85 total people that were surveyed. That is the S or our universal set. But we have to manually distribute the amount of individuals for each. So first, we have to determine the intersection of all of them, which is the intersection of tea, coffee, and milk. 
Now we already have that as 10. So we will write 10 here in the middle. So if we have 10, we have to determine the people that like, for example, coffee and tea. We have to decrease the number that liked all three into the people that liked these two things only. So we get 25 right here and then we decrease it by 10. So the people that like coffee and tea only be 15. The people that like coffee and milk are 15. 15 minus 10, we get 5. The people that like tea and milk, 20, we decrease it by 10, we get 10. We have 45, right? That's what we thought. That's what we thought that the amount of people that likes coffee. To get this, we have to look at the circle of coffee, particularly here. We care about the 15, the 10, and the 5. Alright? So we add all of these. So 15 and 10, we get 25, and then 5, we get 30. Now that 30 will be decreased to the total number of the people that like coffee, which is 45. So 45 minus 30, we get 15. With T, we have 60. Once again, we only care about the circle of T. So we get 15, 10, 10. We got 35. Yes, 35. We decrease it by... We decrease the, the number of 35 into 60. So we get 25. And then finally, with milk, we only care about the circle of milk. So 5, 10, and 10. We have 25 decreased to the total number of milk, which is 30, and we get 5. Now, if we were to add all of this, we should have 85. So, let's see. 25 and 15. Let's add some check marks. 25 and 15 is 40. We add another 15. We got 55. We got another 10. 65. We got another 10. 75. We got a 5. 80, and then finally, another 5, 85. So, we, we end it there. And indeed, what we did was all correct. So, before signing off, I would like to thank everyone for watching this video. I am once again Eugene Allen P. Matero from BSCS2C, and this is now the end of the video.